How to set up a custom email for your Namecheap domain name. The first thing you'll need to do is navigate to Namecheap.com then click on emails here and you'll be taken to this web page. I'll also put my referral link in the description below of this video. That will allow you to use this email service for free for two months. So if I just scroll down here, this is what you'll get. You'll be eligible for a free trial for a two month period of the starter, pro or ultimate email service. And after that, you'll be charged a small fee per month. However, you can even pay less if you decide to go the yearly route. But for now, you're most likely, and I am, going to utilize the two-month free trial. Now, what do I recommend? Well, the starter plan only gives you one mailbox, five gigabyte for your emails, and two gigabyte for your files. The pro version gives you three mailboxes, 30 gigabyte for emails, 15 gigabyte for files, and full mobile sync support. That's quite useful, especially the full mobile sync support. And then finally, the ultimate version, you'll get five mailboxes, 75 gigabytes for your email storage, 35 gigabyte for files, full mobile sync support, docs, sheets, presentations, and a premium email service. Now for me, the ultimate plan is a bit too much. However, I do like the pro plan as I do like to have multiple mailboxes whenever I set up a custom email for my domain name. The mobile sync support is also quite useful as everybody nowadays wants to access their emails on the go via a smartphone. All right, guys, so I'm going to go with the pro version. So all you need to do is click on get mail and left click on it. Once you've done that, you'll be taken to the billing page. Here you'll need to add a domain name, so you can purchase a new domain name if you don't already have a domain name with Namecheap. You can use a domain name you own with Namecheap, which is what I did, or you can use a domain name you own from another registrar. I already have a domain name with Namecheap, and therefore I'm going to click the middle one here, use a domain I own with Namecheap, and left click on it. I'm just going to filter it here by the domain name that I own, which is Websplaining. And I'm going to hit enter and now I'm just going to scroll down and as you can see the domain name websplaining.com is available for selection and all I need to do is left click on select and it will be added to my order here which is two months subscription pro email for free with three mailboxes. Now I've already claimed the free trial and therefore I cannot select this again and then continue through the order process. However for you it's quite simple all you need to do is select a domain name and then continue through the order process. If you don't have a Namecheap account you'll need to create one and if you do you'll need to log in once you're logged in you'll be brought to your account panel which I have open on the next tab here I'm just going to left click on it. So once you're in your account panel, also known as the Namecheap dashboard, you'll be able to see all the emails you own. So to begin configuring your custom email, all you need to do is to select manage on the domain name that you have the free trial on. So just left click manage here. And then all I'm going to do is just scroll down here all the way down and then you should see private email with the validity date and the number of mailboxes that you have set up. So as you can see, I have zero out of three in use and I'm just going to hit manage here. And once you've done that, you'll be in your private email dashboard. As you can see in yellow here, it says you're almost set to be able to activate your private email subscription to receive mail and create mailboxes. You must first set up these important DNS records from the table below. You can find a little help to do this in our handy step-by-step -step guide. Once completed, please allow up to four hours for changes to take effect. Now you can click this step-by-step -step guide if you want. However, I'm here so you don't need to do that. So what we need to do is actually include these three records in our DNS records of our domain name. So what I recommend doing is copying this link here and opening up another tab, which is what I've done here, and then going back on this web page. So I'm just going to click back here and then scroll up to the top here. And I'm just going to show you what's in the other tab here. So as you can see, it's just the private email dashboard here with the three DNS records here. All right, going back to the other tab, just navigate a bit down to where it says name servers. Here you'll need to make sure or change your name servers to Namecheap's basic DNS. So all you need to do is click on this arrow here and then click on Namecheap basic DNS. So left click on this and then click the little save icon here, which is a check mark. Left click on it to save. Great, so you've changed the name servers to Namecheap Basic DNS. If you've just purchased your domain name, it should already be on Namecheap Basic DNS. However, I've had this domain name for a while and it was pointing to one of my personal sites and therefore I had to change it back from custom DNS to Namecheap's Basic DNS. All right, once you've done that, navigate to the top here and then all you need to do is click on Advanced DNS. Left click on it. 
Once you've done that, you want to scroll down here to where it says mail settings. Once you're here, you will need to click on this arrow here right next to no email service and left click on it. And what you want to do is select custom MX. So as you can see, it's already added an MX record. However, it is blank and we need to populate this. So as you can see, the type is MX record and the host is blank. Let's go grab the host from the next tab here that we have open. So as you can see, the first MX record host name is the at symbol. So all of them are actually the at symbol. So just copy that from your private email dashboard and go back to the other tab here and paste the at symbol in. Once you've done that, you need to add the value or the mail server. So just go back to the tab here and get the value, which is MX1 private email.com. Copy this, go back to the other tab and paste that in. For priority, I believe it was 10. Yeah, that's correct. It was 10. So just copy that and paste that in. All right, great. And TTL, you can leave automatic. And now click save all changes. And now you'll have the option to add a new record. So again, we're going to make sure that it's on custom MX here, and then we're going to click add new record. And again, it will generate another MX record that's blank. And now we'll need to add the second MX record details. From what I remember, the host is at the priority is 10. And then the value we can pull it from the other tab here. So it's MX two dot private email dot com. So just copy it, go back to the other tab, paste it in, and then click the check mark icon here. All right, great. So you've got both the MX records in here. Next, we'll need to add the TXT record or the text record. So I'm just going to go back to this tab here. And as you can see, we have a TXT record here. So just copy the value here. And then the record type is TXT. And then the host name is at and there's no priority. Go back to the other tab here. And then to add a TXT record, you don't add it in the mail settings here. You navigate to the top here and you're going to be adding it in the host records here. So as you can see, we have a C name record here, which is the parking page provided by Namecheap. And we're going to delete this as we want it blank and then hit yes. Once you've deleted it, you can now add a new record. So simply click add a new record here, left click on it. And now you'll be given a list for the record type. So as you can see at the top here, it says a record. You need to search for TXT record. There we go. There's the TXT record. Left click on it to select it. And in the host, it's going to be at in the value. You're going to paste in the value you already copied. And then the TTL, you're going to keep it automatic. Simply click the check mark symbol here to save the changes. Great guys, so we've added all our records, we've added our TXT record, and we've added both our MX records. We're pretty much ready to go to create our first mailbox. We can now close out of the advanced DNS tab here and primarily focus on the subscription info private email section here. So great, we've completed the first step and added all the records. And now we need to move on to create our first mailbox. So as you can see here, it says create mailbox now. Left click on this and then you'll be greeted with the create a mailbox window. Here you'll need to choose a mailbox name. So as you can see, your email address is going to be at websplaining.com and then you can choose whatever you want before that. So you can use your real life name if you want. You can use info at websplaining.com. You can use contact at websplaining.com. Whatever your heart desires. I like to go with contact at websplaining.com, which is usually my preference whenever I set up a custom email for my Namecheap domain names. And now you'll need to quickly create a password for the contact at websplaining.com email address. So I'm just going to quickly select one here real quick. All right, so once you've picked a password and confirmed it, you're now ready to choose the mailbox storage. So because we're only allowed three mailboxes and we have 20 gigabytes of storage here, I'm just going to go with five gigabytes of storage as the cutoff point, which gives you room to increase the mailbox storage if you do manage to fill up the five gigabyte. So I'm just going to change the 10 here to five. And then all you need to do is click on save changes. I'm just going to close this save password box here and then navigate all the way down to where it says mailboxes in use. And as you can see, we have one out of three and the mailbox being contact at websplaining.com. The status is on, the number of aliases is zero out of 50, the email storage used is 0% and we have five gigabytes available. So you might be wondering, how do we log into our custom email address from the Namecheap dashboard? Well, all you need to do is click this arrow here next to where it says edit storage, just left click on it and then click on open webmail. Left click on this and it will open up another web page. It will actually take you to privateemail.com, which is the free web based hosting service provided by Namecheap. And as you can see, you'll be greeted with a login window here, which says log into my account. You'll need to enter your email address and enter in the password you picked for the email address you created. So my email address is contact at websplaining.com. And my password, I'm just going to enter that in here real quick. All right, so once you've entered your login details, simply click on login. 
and now you've been logged into your private email or your custom domain name email address. As you can see, you're greeted with a welcome message where you can start your tour. I'm not going to do that now. However, if it's your first time using a web-based email address, then I suggest taking the tour. I'm going to click the X here and I'm going to click no thanks on this. And as you can see, it looks exactly like any email address you've ever used. You've got your inbox here, your drafts, your sent, your spam, your trash, your email domain name, your ability to add a mail account to this email address and the storage size of your mailbox. Let's compose our first email and send it to one of my spare email addresses. So all you need to do is click the blue text here, which says compose to compose a new email and the compose window will open. Here you'll need to include the recipient's email address. So it's going to be myself here. So I'm going to go with websplaining at protonmail.com. That is the email I'm sending to. The subject is going to be, this is a test. And then the email itself is just going to be test, test. And then all you need to do is click send left click on this and it will start sending the email. It should be sent now. I'm just going to check the sent folder just to see if it has sent. Yeah, there we go. It's been sent. And now I'm just going to navigate to the next tab here where I'm logged into my Proton Mail account. So I'm just going to left click on it. And then I'm just going to simply refresh the inbox. And there we go, guys. We've sent and received our first email from contact at websplaining.com. So I'm just going to left click on it just to open it, just to see what the contents are. And as you can see, the subject is this is a test and it says test test and it's from contact at wesplaining.com. Great guys, so I'm just going to reply to this email just to test the inbox of our new custom email. So I'm just going to hit the reply button here and then I'm just going to say nice test and then I'm just going to hit send. All right, that's been sent now. I'm just going to go back to the other tab here and then I'm going to click inbox. Let's just refresh it at the top here. So just left click with the refresh button and there we go, guys. I can see that we have one new inbox. So I'm just going to click cancel here and then I'm going to open up the new inbox message. And as you can see, it says nice test from our websplaining at protonmail.com email address. All right, guys, that pretty much concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. All right, guys, see you on the next one. Why is it so hard to let you